Hello, Sri Sampurna students, teachers, and parents. It's so good to see you again. I hope everyone is still keeping fine and keeping well. Today, we're going to look into the Bible in the Old Testament, the book of Jonah. There are a few things that we can learn from the book of Jonah. Let me share with you three lessons from Jonah. And what are the three lessons? Number one, disobedience leads to death. Two, God is love. Three, obedience leads to life. Let's look at the first lesson. Disobedience leads to death. In Jonah chapter 1, verse 1, it says, One day, the Lord told Jonah, the son of Amittai, to go to the great city of Nineveh and say to the people, The Lord has seen your terrible sins. You are doomed. Now, God told Jonah to go to this place called Nineveh. Why? Because the people are not following God's way. The people are doing what they like. They disobey God's way. And because of their sin and disobedience, God wants to destroy them. Now, that's a scary thing, isn't it? But God is also love. We will know more afterwards. So God told Jonah in verse 3, I want to invite you to read together with me now and read it out loud. Instead, Jonah ran from the Lord. Then he got on the ship and sailed away to escape. Yes, instead of obeying God, after hearing what God says, Jonah ran away from God. He was disobeying God. Now, when there is disobedience, we learn it here, that disobedience will lead to death. Verse 4, when Jonah was running away from God, then the Lord sent a great wind on the sea, and such a violent storm arose that the ship threatened to break up. Now, Jonah was thinking that he could go away from the presence of God. But do you know that God is everywhere? And when he was still in the ship, God caused a great storm. The sea was roaring. The waves were so high. And the ship was running into danger. It says here that the ship was about to break up. When we disobey God, we endanger our own lives and also the lives of others. Because everyone that was in the ship, they were all going to die together with Jonah. But Jonah decided to tell the people, throw me into the sea because I am the cause of this whole problem. So the people at first were hesitant. But then they did what Jonah said. They threw Jonah into the deep sea, into the very, very, very fierce, stormy sea. If somebody will be thrown into a sea that is so stormy, the waves are so high, it's a great storm, do you think the person will be? Even if the person can swim very well, probably the person may not live. Verse 15 says, then they took Jonah and threw him overboard, and the raging sea grew calm. Why does obedience lead to death? Do you know why? Okay, some of you are trying to give me the answer, but I give you the answer here. Because this obedience is sin. And when there is sin, we are separated from God. When there is sin, God is not there. Isaiah 59 verse 2 says this, It is your sin that separates you from your God. He turns away from you when he sees them. When God sees sin, he turns his face away. 
Romans 6 verse 23 says this, the payment or the punishment for sin is death. So disobedience is not only sin, but disobedience is sin. And there's a punishment, there's a payment for disobedience, and that is death. Are you disobeying God? Or are you disobeying your parents? Are you disobeying your teachers? Or right now in Malaysia, are you disobeying even our government? Because we are in this COVID-19 pandemic, there are lots of rules that the government has given to us so that we stay safe. But are we disobeying our government and we are not keeping to the rules? Disobedience leads to death. But God gives us the free gift of life forever in Christ Jesus our Lord. In our disobedience, God do not want us to die. He wants to give us the free gift of life through Jesus Christ. Why? We come to the second lesson we can learn. Because God is love. John 3.16 says, For God so loved the people of this world so much that he gave his only son so that everyone who has faith in him will have eternal life and never really die. Verse 17, God did not send his son into the world to condemn his people. He sent his son to save them. God is love. Even when the people, people of Nineveh were sinning against him, God sent Jonah to warn the people. Why? Because God wants to save them. Romans chapter 5 verse 8 says, let's read together again. But God has shown us how much he loves us. It was while we were still sinners that Christ died for us. I remember this song that I used to teach in children's church in Sunday school. Love of Jesus, sweet and marvelous. Love of Jesus, sweet and marvelous. Love of Jesus, sweet and marvelous. Oh, oh, marvelous love. And this song continued to say, if you know this song, sing it together with me. So high. I can get over it so low. I can get under it so wide. I can get over it. Oh, oh, marvelous love. That's right. The love of God that he shows to us is marvelous. He sent Jesus to come and save us from our sin from our disobedience, from the punishment of our disobedience and our sin. Not only did God send Jesus to come and save us, but God in his love, he showed his love to us by giving us parents, our family, our brothers and sisters to love us, to show us the way of love. And God, because he loves us, he also gives us teachers. You have so many good teachers in Sri Sampuna teaching you. You must thank God for every one of them because their love for you is to teach you the way of God, the way of obedience that leads to life, not disobedience. And God gives us friends. God, God doesn't want you to be alone. He gives you friends that you can talk to, friends that you can laugh with, friends that you can do project together with, friends that come and give you a hug sometimes when you're sad. It's all because God loves you and because God is love. In this time, when a lot of people, because they do not have a job, they have lost their job, they have no money, they can hardly buy food. And that is why 
uh, I have some friends together with me. We give out food to the people who are poor. We give them nasi lemak, we give them apple, we give them biscuits, we give them bread. But do you know, because of the love of God, He provides you food to eat. He provides your daddy and your mommy the ability to still have money to buy food. And because God is love, God is protecting you and me. But you must be wise. You must continue to wear your mask. You must continue to wash your hair. You must continue not to go to places that are very crowded. And you must continue to obey what the government said about SOP. That means following the rules that the government gives to us. It's all because God loves us. We are protected. We have our family. We have our teachers. We have our friends. We have food. God loves you and me so much. And in the same manner, even though Jonah had disobeyed God, the people of Nineveh had disobeyed God. But God gave Jonah the miracle of life. When Jonah was thrown into the sea, into the water, he could have drowned. He could have died. But God protected him. God helped him. And then God did another miracle, not just helping him to stay alive in the water. In verse 17, it says, the Lord sent a big fish to swallow Jonah. And Jonah was inside the fish for three days and three nights. It's a very big fish. But even though it's a very big fish, if a big fish were to swallow a human, for one day, will the human live in the fish? Of course, the human cannot live. I know there are pythons that have swallowed people and the people died inside the python. Now, what more this fish? But you see, with God, nothing is impossible. This God of love, he can still do miracle. And he protected Jonah and he did a miracle to keep Jonah alive. But what was Jonah doing inside the fish? Three days, three nights. Let's look at the third lesson. The third lesson that we can learn from Jonah is repentance leads to life. In Jonah chapter 2 verse 9, Jonah was crying out to God inside the fish. He was alive, he wasn't dead. And he was crying out to God. And in verse 9, it says, But with shouts of praise, I will offer a sacrifice to you, my Lord. I will keep my promise. I will not run away from you, God. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, God. Because you are the one with power to save. You see what Jonah was doing inside the fish after God actually protected him, continued to give him life, he said sorry to God. And that is repenting before God. Now, this is a big word, repentance. Repentance starts with saying sorry. But it must not stop there. Because if you just say sorry and you continue to keep doing and disobeying, then there is no repentance. It's only saying sorry. But true repentance is not only saying sorry, but you must also stop doing the wrong things. So repentance is, I say sorry to God. Repentance is, I say sorry to my parents because I've disobeyed them. Repentance is, I say sorry to my teachers because I've disobeyed my teacher. Repentance is saying sorry for the things that I've done wrong. And then you must stop doing those wrong. In fact, in Matthew chapter 3, verse 8, Jesus said this. Now let's say it together with Jesus. 
One, two, three. Matthew 3, verse 8. You must do the things that show that you have really changed your hearts and lives. That means if you are sorry for the things that you have done wrong for disobeying, then you must stop now disobeying. And now you must obey. You must start doing what is right. Jonah disobeyed God. But Jonah repented. And repentance leads to life because God is love. God saved Jonah. Jonah didn't die. The fish, after three days, vomited Jonah out and Jonah was still alive. Remember just now, repentance is not only saying sorry. Jonah didn't only say sorry to God, but now Jonah obeyed God. He went to Nineveh where he didn't want to, to go. And he started to tell the people that God is going to destroy them if they do not repent. And what happened? When the people of Nineveh also repented, God saved Nineveh. The people didn't die. God didn't destroy Nineveh when they repented. So let's remember three things. Number one, disobedience leads to death because disobedience is sin. But God is love. God loves you. God loves me. God loves your parents. God loves your family. God loves your teacher. God loves your friends. And God wants to give you life, not destroy your life. Can I right now ask you to just close your eyes? As you remember the song we just sang just now, Love of Jesus, sweet and marvelous. Yes, Jesus truly loved you. And he doesn't want you to continue in disobedience. He wants you to repent. He sees everything. Nothing is hidden from God. So right now, with your eyes closed, I want to invite you to say this prayer together with me. If you know that you have made mistakes, I have made mistakes. And God says, repent now. If we repent, if we say sorry to God, we stop doing what is wrong, God says he will forgive us. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, I thank you for teaching me from the life of Jonah that disobedience leads to death. But you are a God who loved me because God is love. Today, I want to say, Lord, I'm sorry for disobeying you. I'm sorry for disobeying my parents. I'm sorry for disobeying my teachers. I'm sorry for disobeying even the government. I pray that you will forgive me. And today, I ask you to help me to walk the way of obedience. I repent from doing wrong, and now I choose to do what is right. I thank you, Lord Jesus. Now, for those who do not know Jesus yet, I want to pray together with you and ask you to pray after me, to ask Jesus to be your Lord, your God, and Savior. Why? Because God sent Jesus to save you. Let's pray together. Lord Jesus, you are God. I thank you for coming to this world to save me from my sin. Lord Jesus, I open my heart to invite you into my life. Forgive me of all my sins. From today onwards, I belong to Jesus and I walk in obedience to your word. Thank you, Jesus. 
In your mighty name, I pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you once again, Sri Sampurna students, teachers, and parents for having me to share with you. God bless you. Stay safe. Bye-bye.